Good morning, and welcome to Coffee Pot Bible Fellowship in Cheyenne, Wyoming, Sap Brothers Truck Stop. We are going to open this morning with hymn number 680, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. morning um, I want to remind you if you have any prayer requests you can send them to us by text you can call you can post them on our Facebook page you can just be sure to let us know whether or not you want them to be kept private or not if you'd rather they be private we will just mention them as an unspoken and uh, this morning we're going to of course remember all the truck drivers out on the road today here in Cheyenne anyway it's really really nasty foggy it's almost zero visibility so we're going to pray for the safety of our drivers out there on the roads and also pray for the Tweedy, Tweedy family. Um, Brian Tweedy was in a car wreck. He was paralyzed and pray for his, himself and uh, his family. So if you join me this morning for a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for the day you've given us. Keep the drivers out there on the road safe, Lord, especially the ones here in this area that are having to drive through this thick fog, Lord. And be with them. Sharpen their eyesight. Keep them safe. And Lord, we uh, remember the Tweedy family this morning and Brian Tweedy being paralyzed and I believe still in the hospital, Lord. And be with him. Give him strength, Lord. And uh, show him what you have for his life, Lord. And comfort his family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our next song this morning is going to be Lord Speak to Me, number 667.
next will be, well, our software calls it, there is a place of quiet rest. It's hymn number 617. Today's message is called, So I'm a Christian, Now What? Well, we've got these tracks here. Oh, I didn't grab one to bring up here. But uh, we've got these tracks here called, So I'm a Christian, Now What? They're uh, written by Ord Morrow, copyrighted 1973, by the Good News Broadcasting Association. And I'm not going to be quoting anything in the tracks, so I don't have to worry about any copyright violations or anything. But... I read the track, and it, it gave me an idea for this message, and so I did borrow the title, but uh, other than that, um, you won't see anything from the track in the message. Um, so, it, so basically, you've accepted Christ as your Savior, and you're a Christian, all right? But has anyone bothered to explain to you what is expected to you from this point on? Has anyone sat down and helped you figure out where you go from here? What is your next step? You've accepted Christ as your Savior. You're a Christian. You're going to heaven. But now what? Now what do you do? Well, let's start by finding a good local Bible-believing church. And uh, when you find the one that, that your heart tells you is where you belong, join it. Become active. Join a ministry of some sort. Do something. If you're checking out churches to see if it feels like this is where you should be, remember something. If you never hear anything that hurts your feelings, you're probably not in the right church. Amen. A church is where you go to hear the gospel preached, to learn how to live for Christ, and to get support from fellow Christians. But if you never feel convicted to change anything in your life after a message might want to think about moving on. Join me for a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for the stage you've given us. Once again, we ask that uh, you keep the drivers out there on the road safe, Lord. And Once again, we ask you to be with Brian Tweedy and his family. And Lord, be with me as I present this message, Lord. and Help me to bring across what you want to be said this morning, Lord. And be with those that hear that they'd have open hearts to hear what you want them to hear, Lord. And we ask these things in your name, in Jesus' name. Amen. So in Hebrews chapter 10, 
verses 23 through 25. It says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. So here we are told that we should hold on to the profession of our faith without wavering. And this is so much easier to do when we surround ourselves with fellow Christians as much as humanly possible. We're also supposed to provoke one another unto love and good works. Once again, this is much easier to do when we're surrounded by fellow Christians. We all need to be reminded of our purpose in life. And one aspect of that is to exhort one another to do good and to love everyone. If we do good, people will see Christ in us. And if we love everyone, we will be less likely to condemn others. We, we can and should judge others in Christ's love. Just as Christ loves us. And then we are told not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. We need to be with one another as much as possible so that we can help one another live Christ-like and both learn and teach others about the Word of God. You would be surprised at what you, at what, yeah, I messed up my notes. So you would be surprised at what you can learn just by helping others learn and by others people asking questions. If you ask a question I don't have a ready answer to, I'm going to study it out. And guess what? I'm probably going to learn something because you had a question. More often than not, the teacher learns more by helping others learn than by any lessons he or she may take. I used to teach shooting sports to kids for 4-H. And uh, I've had several classes, several training classes that I took to be able to do this. And I have to say, I learned more by standing on that line helping the kids shoot than I ever did in any of the classes that I ever took. The same thing goes for learning spiritual things. When you're helping others learn, you end up learning yourself, and more often than not, the lessons actually stick. But you have to have an open heart. You have to have an open mind, and you have to be willing to learn. It would be so easy to go out and show other people what they need to do but have a closed mind and not learn anything from it ourselves. So next, let's make sure we're reading God's Word. You probably won't understand everything you're reading as a new Christian, but you know what? That's okay. You can ask the people in your church to help you understand. That's what fellow Christians do. We help each other learn. In Psalm 119, verse 11, Psalmist says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Here are two verses that show that we should be reading, memorizing, and studying the word of God. Psalm 119 says that we hide God's word in our heart, or we memorize scripture, so that we might not sin against God. The more scripture we learn, the less chance that we will do something sinful, as the verses that we memorize will help convict us of wrongdoing. Second Timothy says that we should study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that has no reason to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. And this is basically saying, or the word of truth, but this is basically saying that we should study the scriptures so that we can help others understand them. And the more we study, the more accurately we can explain it, the more accurately we'll understand it, which means that we won't be ashamed before God because we got it as correct as humanly possible. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. This verse tells us that faith, which is needed to be a believer in Christ, comes by hearing. And that hearing comes by the Word of God. This makes it pretty clear that if we want to have the faith needed to live for Christ, we need to be in God's Word, reading, studying, and even listening to it. 
And guess what? The best way to listen to the Word of God is to sit in church and to listen to your preacher read and expound on the Word of God, which goes back to the beginning point where you need to find a church to sit in. And third, people are not perfect. We're going to fail. And there may be times that we wonder, how can we ever be good enough to live up to God's standards? Well, the short answer is we can't. We never will. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, if we surrender our lives to Him, we can live lives that are pre pleasing to God. Think about King David in the Old Testament. God calls him a man after his own heart. Yet David had committed some atrocious crimes and sins. We'll read 2 Samuel 11, verses 1 through 5. And it came to pass, after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all of Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon, and besieged Ramah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in an evening tide, that David arose from off his bed, and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness. Hey there, come on in. And she returned unto her house. And the women conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. So we see here in 2 Samuel that David made a few mistakes. One, the army went out and besieged the children, or they destroyed the children of Ammon, besieged Rabbah, but David stayed in Jerusalem. He did not go out with the army. David stayed behind. And then secondly, David goes up on his rooftop, which they, they did back then, and he saw a woman washing herself, and he saw that she was very beautiful to look upon. Well, instead of turning around, walking away, he lusted after her with his eyes, and he unfortunately followed up on that by sending after her and bringing her into his house. So here we see that David, King David committed an act of adultery and even had a child from it. And then when we continue reading, we see that King David even committed murder. In 2 Samuel 11, verses 14 through 17, it says, And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire ye from him, that he may be spitten and die. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city, that he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that valiant men were. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab, and there fell some of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. King David slept with a married woman, caused her to become pregnant, and then had her husband killed. And yet, God says that David was a man after his own heart. In the New Testament, we have Saul, a man who persecuted and killed Christians, and yet God converts him and uses him to be a mighty missionary to both the Jew and the Gentile. Not many of us can say that we have committed crimes or sins of these natures, but even if we have, God can and will use us if we ask him for forgiveness for what we've done and allow him to have control over our lives. In conclusion, for those who have not yet given, our lives, given your lives to Christ or you have not asked God to forgive your sins and be your Savior, now is the time. If you ask God for forgiveness, he will forgive. So, in Romans 3, verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
basically this is telling us that we've all sinned every one of us has done something wrong we can no longer get into heaven we can no longer sit side by side with god we are now at enmity with him romans six twenty three says for the wages of sin is death but the gift of of god is eternal life through jesus christ our lord so the wages of these sins that we have committed is death both physical death and spiritual death by being separated from god for all of eternity but then in Romans 5, 8, that God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So Christ came and died so that we no longer have to pay the penalty of our own sins. So then if we go to uh, John chapter 3, we're going to read verses 14 through 21. And it says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds be, should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. So all you need to do is believe in God. Believe that Christ died, was buried for three days and nights, and rose again, and sits at the right hand of God, and you will be saved. Nothing that you have done can possibly make verse 16 invalid. This passage does not have a single exception. It says all who believe will have everlasting life. See, Jesus did not come into the world to condemn us. We did that to ourselves already. He came to save us. So, if, if the rest of the message, you know, so I'm a Christian, now what? If that doesn't pertain to you yet, then remember, you can still ask God to come into your life, and then you can follow the rest of those steps. And you can be with God forever. So we're going to close this morning with one final song. Facebook, go off. I, uh... Okay, we'll figure, I'll upload it. So we're going to end today with Psalm number 581. There's a hymn book right here in the... Yeah, there you go. number 581 is so sweet to trust in Jesus Thank you.
Thank you for joining us online today, and uh, we'll see you next week.